What's up guys, Cooper Carter here for G66 and on this week's Fractal Friday, I'm gonna show you guys one of the most powerful ways to automate your time dependent effects that can free you up from having to step on your pedals. I was recently working in production rehearsals with a fractal powered band that's going out on tour this spring and summer. And one of the songs in the set list requires the guitarist to actuate a foot pedal to move a filter through its sweep. Now the filter is sweeping in various increments of time throughout the entire song. So there's quarter note sweeps, there's eighth note triplet sweeps, there's whole note sweeps, and there's an entire two measure sweep as well every now and then, so two whole notes. Now he's sweeping the pedal, but again, the effect's going through the whole song, so he's pretty much tied to his pedal board the entire time. Not a whole lot of fun, especially when you're on a big stage with a big crowd and you wanna be working the audience and enjoying playing with a band. So we really wanted to automate this filter sweep. Now, historically, you likely would have done that by having front of house simply add a filter effect to your channel and then manually ride a knob or a fader to bring in and out the effect. But that's a lot of work for front of house and it being Fractal World, I like to get as much as possible actually happening inside the box. So to pull this off, I turned to one of the most powerful tools in the Fractal lineup, the ADSR. Now this is just a quick video covering one small use case scenario for a very powerful tool, but if you guys wanna get the absolute most out of your Fractal unit, whether that's an XFX3, an FM9, or an FM3, make sure to visit classes.coopercarter.com for my complete Fractal Audio Masterclass series. So first off, really briefly, I'm sure many of you guys are curious what the arpeggiator sound that I have working as kind of the rhythm background tone uh, in the intro is. That's just the factory preset arpeggiator Madness FM9 put together by the brilliant Matt Picone. And you can play single notes and it arpeggiates using this pitch block here. <laughs> And it has some great phasing and reverb as well. So you guys definitely check out that preset and have some fun with it. All I did was just increase the number of steps up to 16 and then repeat the pattern with one extra note so that I got some cool syncopation when I played in time with what I was planning on playing with the other preset. So let's move on to the main event. So as you heard in the intro, the effect that we have here is a filter sweep. So we use a low pass filter set to second order. We've got a low frequency of around 78 hertz and then a high frequency of 5.6K or so, uh, a Q of 4.1 and everything else is normal or default here. So moving the pedal through its full range of motion, we get this. <laughs> And so in time with the song, we can either get quarter notes or whole notes or much quicker kind of eighth note stabs. Now, of course, the issue that you have with tying an effect to a pedal is that you always have to be standing by the pedal to get the effect to work correctly. So how to separate this filter sweep from the pedal and automate it? Well, the first thing you might think about doing is just changing this pedal to an envelope follower. The envelope follower follows your playing based on envelope settings. Under the controllers menu here, we have the envelope settings here. And as we play, the filter will automatically sweep. The issue we have there though, is that yes, the filter is actuating when we play, so it's automated in a sense. But of course, since it's following the dynamics of our playing, 
It's impossible to have the filter sweep in time with, for example, a quarter note or a whole note or eighth notes because it's following the dynamics of our playing. So it starts sweeping when we start playing because, of course, it's opening up because we play loud and we break the envelope's threshold. But then the actual sweep down is governed by the dynamics of the note's decay. Hardly the much smoother sweep we get from using the pedal. So the solution is to turn to one of the most powerful controllers in fractal audio units, one of the least appreciated, I believe, and one that I turn to very often when it comes to automating sounds for the live environment, and that is the ADSR. Anybody familiar with synthesizers may already be familiar with ADSRs. ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release, and they enable you to craft your own modifier curve that is triggered by your playing. So when your playing crosses a threshold, in this case minus 20 dB, this curve fires, and here it fires once. You can also set it to loop continually or just to hold at the sustain or middle point. And when it fires, it does so over four given values, the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. So when we play, we attack all the way up to 100%. We decay over a set amount of time down to 50% or the sustain level. We sustain for a given amount of time at that level, and then we release, returning back down to zero. Right now we have 50 milliseconds for all of these values. I'm gonna go ahead and change this from exponential to linear, and with it attached to our filter sweep here, we can see what happens when we play. We'll go to the ADSR. Now, 50 milliseconds is a very short amount of time, so you can barely even see this yellow dot travel throughout the range of the ADSR. So let's crank all these up just arbitrarily so you can see what actually happens. We'll go to the filter. So now that we have a way to automate the filter sweep in response to our playing, it really just becomes an issue of doing a little bit of math. So we want to be able to sweep this filter on a quarter note time basis, a whole note time basis, an eighth note triplet, and two measures or two whole notes. So at 120 beats per minute, a quarter note is just going to be 500 milliseconds. So let's attack over 200 milliseconds. Let's not decay it at all. Let's sustain for, let's say, 100 milliseconds, and then decay for 200 milliseconds. We'll then set the sustain level up to 100%, and now we get this nice little curve here. We'll play, and we've got a quarter note sweep that automatically fires. Whenever we trigger the ADSR with our playing. So let's go up to scene two here. So a whole note at 120 beats per minute is going to be 2000 milliseconds. So let's attack with 500, no decay, no sustain, sustain level up to 100, and let's decay over 1500. So now we're gonna open up over beat one and then release the filter over beats two, three, and four. All right, so let's go up to scene three and dial in an eighth note triplet sweep. So an eighth note triplet at 120 BPM is 167 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and attack over 50 milliseconds. Let's not decay. We're going to sustain at 100% for 67 milliseconds and then release over 50. So we've got 167. <laughs> And finally, let's go up to scene four and dial in two entire measures of sweep. So let's attack again over 500 milliseconds, no decay, no sustain, and then we'll release over 3,500 milliseconds for a total of 4,000 milliseconds or two full measures at 120 beats per minute. And now with four scenes and four channels, we can either have a playback system switch between our different lengths 
or have an offstage pedal board be switched by a tech, which is in this case uh, what we ended up doing with the band on tour. The ADSR is a supremely powerful controller for shaping tone and dynamically modifying or automating all sorts of different parameters in fractal units. Let your imagination run wild with this. I have used it in so many different instances. Those of you who follow Fractal Friday may have seen the Girls Like You case study video that I did diving into Maroon 5's hit Girls Like You that opens with a filter sweep on an acoustic tone. I used the ADSR to automate that live as well. So check out the ADSR if you're not familiar with it and do some experimenting. You may find it opens a whole lot of doors for you in terms of separating you and your pedal board live so that you're free to move around the stage, interact with the audience, and just generally be less connected to the pedals that you have in front of you. So I hope this video has given you guys some ideas on how to put the ADSR to use in your own playing and presets. If you did enjoy the video, please do make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to G66's channel, and leave me a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you would like to see on a future Fractal Friday or if you're using the ADSR already in your own playing and how. And as always, if you guys want to get the absolute most out of your Fractal Audio unit, whether that's the Axe 3 the FM9, or the FM3, make sure to visit classes.coopercarter.com for my complete Fractal Audio Masterclass series. For all things Fractal Audio, keep it right here on G66, and I will see you guys next week on Fractal Friday.